Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome to another video in this series on redesigning a mobile app. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and look at the overview section. Uh, this is where we look at the total balances, which is basically the uh, total incomes, total expenses, and uh, investments uh, made as well. Uh, in the previous video, we went ahead and looked at how to redesign the current balance card, which is basically how much money is left in your bank account. So without any further ado, let's get started, all right. So this is the home screen, and uh, as we, as I mentioned, we uh, went ahead and redesigned this card in the, the previous uh, video. And now we also have this spending summary, which is basically a breakdown of your expenses. And then you've got this thing as uh, called as the um, cash flows, right? Now I had already mentioned, uh, you know, in a couple of videos before that this concept of calling something spending and outgoing and then incoming and incomes is is too complicated right and here they've used the word left which is not really a financial term something like savings um, or unused balances or something like that it feels like a lot of effort hasn't been put into it and also showing this just as numbers also isn't really adding any value to be um, uh, very honest so um, i also mentioned that we would be removing this entire section uh, which is basically the breakdown of the summary expenses and we would see it when we go one level deeper right and i explained this in the app architecture video that you can find um, in uh, the video series uh, let me quickly show you what i spoke about over there this was the entire structure of uh, the uh, of the app and basically uh, we had the expense categories that we just saw and then we had the overview of expenses and ideally we would remove all of this and just start with the overview then go to the categories then go to the listing of transactions for that category and then we look at the transaction details right so this is what we're going to be following now, I also created two personas for this. Now, it's pretty hard to make, you know, user stories and personas for uh, this specific, uh, you know, feature because obviously from a hierarchy standpoint, we have to start with the overview. You have to have the total of the expenses and incomes and whatever that you're speaking about, right? That total is really important, right? So if I were to quickly explain that, you know, just creating a user story where I want to see an overview of my incomes and expenses and investment for the current month or year, um, most likely it will be the current month. I don't want any details because I know what I have to my money i just want an easy to understand format right um, and i want to see if anything is irregular right um, and here's another one just an example i want to see if i'm under my budget so that i can plan for the rest of the month and the next month um, i just want to be aware right so basically even though the app doesn't have the concept of budgeting you have some sort of a figure in mind uh, that you say like hey my monthly expenses usually come to comes up to you know forty five thousand rupees and that's something that's mentally there in your head so when you open the app you just want to see how much have i spent so far right of course when there is budgeting you're going to get a lot more information but just seeing the total of expenses of uh, whether it is below forty-five thousand as the mental budget you set is also important right um so we can actually get that information over here but of course visually representing it is a lot better and we would remove this entire section you also have a lot of options over here uh, when you click on this you can actually toggle and choose whether you want incoming outgoing invested or left um, here's just a screenshot of it so if i were to go ahead and you know somehow uh, quickly put this over here we can add uh, these two personas over here or maybe over here it doesn't really matter so basically when you click on this info icon you get to see this where you can sort of turn on and off this and change the order I don't think anybody is going to go ahead and you know play around with this and you know all of this extra features is really unnecessary to be very honest um, you know turning it on and off rearranging the order why is all of this even needed in the first place right I think from a product or design standpoint it doesn't really make any sense to me um, so what can we do to make things a lot simpler right so first of all the main thing that I wanted to do is to visually represent this in a bigger way because not only do we want the absolute numbers but we also want to see it in a complete comparison right when you compare things it makes it a lot better to get that information because sometimes you might be thinking in terms of percentages you might not always you know you know make decisions looking at the actual uh, absolute number right um, and you know visually when you look at things they might give you a different impression than when you just look at an absolute number right so there are a lot of psychological things also that play attention when you look at these numbers and sometimes the best way is obviously to go ahead and visually represent it in a much simple and easy to understand format right I don't know explain what that means so what i did was i started off uh, by creating something like this so i called it overview and i added two filters basically switching between this month 
and this year because right now you can only do it for a month and you can't do it for a year so i decided to have an option called month and year right this is my first iteration and I tried without using any colors and just used grays. And I think this is pretty much very unclear, to be very honest. Uh, I don't think anybody has to point it out. So this is basically the first iteration that I made. And I added these colors and I added this much as the income, this much as the expenses, this much as the investment. Now, for some reason, Fold Money wants to separate out expenses and investments. Um, and I'm going to be OK with that decision because I think they're bringing investments as another module sort of a thing inside the app. I don't really know what they're planning, to be very honest, but for the sake of simplicity, let's just split them right but we can ideally go ahead and combine both of them together right um the next thing that i did was i felt you know having these tabs on the home screen might be too many buttons it's looking visually cluttered so um, i tried to add an icon and then use like this drop down but again i didn't really want to have any of these things on the top you know, on the right side right i don't want to have any additional um unnecessary buttons or actions the users have to perform right at least on the home screen of course, it makes sense uh, to have these functionalities and granular settings uh, later on in the second level and the third level. But on the first level, I don't really want anybody to have any control in changing whatever they want, right? Unless it's a hard requirement from the users, right? So this is another one. And um, here I added September 2023, which is basically the current month. And if you change this to the current year, this would be 2023, right? So tried another option, didn't like this either. Uh, then again, was another option I'm um, going to add a question here as well uh, so that I can uh, speak about this. So um, I added this functionality where you can swipe and see the previous months. Of course, you do want to see the trend over time as well. Uh, but is that something that we want to do on the home screen is a question that I sort of was thinking about, right? Maybe this functionality is not needed on the home screen, but there was just a concept um, uh, that I tried, right? Um, and uh, here, when you change it to yearly, you can go ahead and see uh, for 2023 and you could see for 2022, right? So I'm just going to delete this. Um, then I decided to add some color because I realized this is definitely not working. So I added some color and incoming was obviously green. Um, red was your expenses and then investments is, is blue, right? So the whole concept of left um, is is out of the picture, right? Left is basically the entire concept of savings or how much is gone, right? Because you might have invest, you might have spent or invested more than how much you earned that month, right? And that's okay. That's okay. It's not like you know you have to spend only uh, with within the limits of how much you earn, right? This is the total balance and your previous savings as well that you're taking into consideration, right? Um, then this pie chart felt too bulky, so I tried another option which was similar to the Apple uh, rings that you see. But the problem here was that it felt like this was something that I had to complete, which is not really the case. It's it's like you know it was almost like I am you know eighty five percent completed. Uh, you know, to reaching my goal, right? That's not really what it is, right? So this definitely gave the wrong opinion. Um, and so I, uh, I mean, I, I had two options, one with color and one without color. I don't think it made any sense to me uh, either. Um, and then I tried another option over here where I changed the order. So I started with expenses, sorry, I started with incomes, then I went to expenses and then I went to investments. But again, this felt, you know, very out of place and you can see visually it just looks super confusing. Um, and then I came up with this approach where there's no sense of completion or percentage as you can see over here, but it's more like everything is combined together and visually without even looking at the numbers, you can see how much more you spent from a percentage standpoint, right? The moment you look at this, you can then realize, oh, I spent a lot more than how much I earned. Oh, I've invested very less. I think my investments should be equal to how much I spent, right? Doing all of that mental mapping in your head and making all those mental decisions decisions um, in your head uh, by just by looking at numbers isn't really helpful, right? Because without looking numbers, you can still make a lot of sense um, and understand things, right? You don't need the actual percentages, but visually you can see, oh my God, I invested very less. I think I need to invest a lot more, right? Um, and of course, this might be a very rare case where your expenses are so high compared to your incomes. Maybe you had to do a down payment. Maybe you had to buy something. Maybe there was a medical expense, right? So this is not really the ideal case. Most likely when some Somebody's thinking you want to make sure that the expenses do not cross the incomes for that particular month, right? So visually, even if there's like a 40-50 split, or maybe uh, if you add investments, there's a 20-30 and there's a 50% split, visually that's more than enough for a lot of people. They don't really have to know the actual numbers. 
Of course, the numbers are available to them, but doing that mental mapping just by looking at this uh, chart is definitely helpful, right? So I finalized on uh, this approach, all right? Um, now, once I finalized it, I had to figure out how do I add the title, how do I do the month versus the year and all of those things. And I removed the uh, month over here because I added it over here, which didn't really look good. Um, and then, so this was for the current month and this was for 2023. First of all, this didn't even make sense to me, to be very honest, in the beginning when I redesigned this, because, you know, it, it's more like it should be a monthly or a yearly, but then here I'm switching between September and 2023, just, just visually I was like, what is this? This is super confusing. So I didn't go with this iteration as well. And then I tried another one where um, I added the drop down to select between monthly and yearly, and then added all of these options. But again, I I've realized that giving this too much flexibility right on the home screen doesn't make sense because 90% of the time users are going to be focusing on a specific month, right? There are only going to be small use cases where, you know, somebody would be like, hey, let me check how much I spent three months ago, right? So, but usually whoever is using the app, they are going to be focusing on the current month, right? Um, so that's that. Another thing that I added was, do we need to have this trend information, right? Where, you know, you're comparing it from the previous year to this year. Um, I just added it for expenses, but I felt maybe it's not important right now. Um, and then you're adding too much of information. You're adding too much text. It's just getting too, too much unnecessary. There's, there's a lot of visual noise over here, right? So I decided I didn't like this as well. Um, then I tried another option where I removed, you know, all of these unnecessary things, added a icon button, which probably would bring in a more uh, clean look. So no text just add an icon but again I was just questioning do we really need to give that functionality over here because when people land on the app they want to see information for the current month 90% of the times right um, if they really want they can go ahead and edit it somewhere inside uh, and uh, I didn't really want to add that icon right so I decided to finally go with this iteration where you only see it for the current month. If you want more granular level, you can tap on this, you can go inside and then you can filter to a different time period if you want. Keeping things simple on the home screen is of utmost importance. Do not give too many options. Do not make things unnecessarily complicated um, for users, right? You need to know what you, your users want and you design your screen accordingly, right? So uh, that's what, that's very important. Another decision that I took was I decided to not add any uh, symbol. The, basically the plus symbol, I decided to remove it for incomes and just added uh, for incomes and investments. I'm not still very sure about this decision. Maybe we can continue to add the plus icon for incomes. Maybe it's a little bit faster to understand, um, but probably would get user feedback and say if they really got confused uh, because there was no plus, then we would add back the plus. Not a big deal to be very honest, but I just thought to keep things simple um, only have the minus for expenses and investments and have nothing for incomes because it's a positive number, right? Um, so to visually show you how that would look, uh, right? So this is all, this is how our home screen would look. So you would have something called home, you would have current balance, you, have, you would have overview and that's about it. No additional buttons, no additional features, absolutely nothing, right? So we would remove this entire section altogether and just take this entire cash flow and you know, put it over here, right? So instead of having three different titles and this one is in all caps for some reason um, and having this icon, which you know, icons are not really adding value over here. Um, and instead of keeping everything, you know, with so many lines and colors and you can see that this much is, a, this, this one is a lot simpler, right? And you can actually mirror this on your phone. If you take the file and you click on the frame and you can mirror it on your phone, you can actually see how it feels. It, it looks super simple and straightforward, right? I think this is super important. So you can see, visually how much better it looks and also looks super clean and consistent. So this somehow would be an ideal view of how it would look, right? So this much is your income. So visually you can just see that, okay, you did spend more uh, than how much you earned. And you've also decently invested around 30%, which is fine. And visually without even looking into the numbers and looking at the total values, you can see, yeah, I think I'm, I'm doing okay. I know that my expenses increased this month because I had to buy something uh, special or I had to go on that vacation. So my income's, ex my expenses increased, but you know, it's not like I spent too much, right? This is my income. This much is my investment. I think I'm doing all right, right? So you can look, make a lot of mental decisions without even looking at numbers, without even just, you know, uh, just by looking at the graph over here, right? And I think making those decisions over here is so confusing because you have only numbers, you have nothing else to compare, 
right? Even the fact that there are colors over here can make you quickly make decisions, right? I think this looks a lot better. Let me know what you guys think in the, the comment sections uh, down below, yeah. Um, and visually, I removed the, uh, you know, the dividers, sorry, the strokes. I removed the dividers over here. Um, you know, just used white spaced basic colors and shadows. And I think it looks super cleaner, right? And each of these now looks tappable as well. Um, initially, I didn't know that these were tappable when I used the app for the first time. It, it I mistapped and that's when I realized there's more information. Uh, but here, this definitely looks uh, completely uh, tappable. So, uh, I hope this made a lot of sense. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you really love it in the comment sections down below, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing, awesome content. And see you guys in my next video. So then, take care and bye-bye.